On this channel I've covered many different types of locomotives. I've even covered a type which served for two railway companies for two different nations. But this video is a first, as this is the first video covering a type of train that is still in service. The most common type of passenger trains in the Netherlands are the firm double-decker units, the ICMM, lovingly nicknamed Koplopers, in this case this is a Dutch pun, it means both walk-through heads and frontrunners, and the SNG, Sprinter New Generation, for any servers calling at all stations along their appointed line. The Virms are not the only type of double-decker trains running in the Netherlands though. Today, we're talking about the DDZ, double-decker zoneering, or zoning. From the early 1980s, the Dutch network was greatly modernised, introducing several new electric and diesel multiple units along with locomotives to replace the old stock, most of which could be traced back to before the Second World War. This plan was very much rushed, locomotives such as the class 1100 and 1300 being withdrawn only to be pressed back into service with the minimal maintenance, sometimes literally only being withdrawn upon failing to limp back to their home depot. That sounds familiar. The fallout of this disastrous plan only cleared when the class 1600 locomotives were introduced in 1981, which quickly became the mainstay of intercity expresses and heavy freight work. As good as the class 1600s were, they didn't help to increase capacity on passenger trains. And increasing capacity isn't a case of just adding one or two carriages to the train. The main problem this creates is that trains would be too long for the platforms they are due to stop at. The French had solved this problem by using double-deck trains. This way, trains could stay the same overall length and capacity was theoretically doubled. The French were hardly the first, the Danish and the Russians to name but two got there way before the French did, but it was the French the NS took as a blueprint. In October 1980, the NS trialled the SNCF type VB2N, a rake of carriages with a driving trailer at one end. Power had to be supplied by a locomotive at the other end of the train. This achieved the basic goals of the trials, but the type had one glaring fault for the average Dutch person anyway. They were too low. At its peak, haha, the carriage standing room was only 1m94. Many a Dutchie would bump their head when standing up. So a new design was required. The result was this, the DDM, or DDM1, meaning Double Deck Material 1, pressed into service in 1985. The units would always have to be pushed or pulled by a 1600, which was also heavily inspired <coughs> by the SNCF. If the units were pushed, the driver could drive the train from the driving trailer coach. The first of these trailers were named after endangered animals in accordance with the Worldwide Fund for Nature. They were Arend, Bison, Cheetah, Condor, Dolphin, Neushorn, Olifant, Ooyvaar, Otter, Panda, Tiger, Walvis en Zeehond. Or Eagle, Bison, Cheetah, Condor, Dolphin, Rhinoceros, Elephant, Stork, Otter, Panda, Tiger, Whale and Seal in English. The brilliance of these units was that they were not permanently coupled together. If you needed to strengthen one rake with an extra carriage, you could do so. If a single deck train needed more capacity, you could add a DDM carriage to the train. The carriages themselves had an interesting layout. At the top of the stairs, before entering the main seating compartment, there were three extra seats, two huddled together facing inwards, affectionately known as the snuggle corner, and one longitudinal fold-up seat. Perfect for looking at the passengers boarding the train, only to realise that there are no more seats left. There were two poles in the middle of the entrance hallway on either side for the benefit of standing passengers to have something to hold on to, very much like one would find in a coach of the road-faring kind. So successful were these carriages that two more ranges were built, classified DDM2 and DDM3, but known to most people as DDARs. Like the DDM1s before them, the DDARs were painted in the NS stopping train livery, yellow all over with three turquoise stripes on the right hand side of whichever side of the carriage you were looking at. The DDM1s were painted as such because they were to be used in various surfaces, the DDARs were purely meant for stopping trains. In order to lengthen trains with DDAR carriages, these sets were fitted with both classic three-link couplings with buffers, as well as a BSI automatic coupling. The DDM1s only had three-links and buffers. Similar to the old guard, the new sets were unpowered and required a locomotive to push or pull them. Usually it would be a class 1700, a revised series of 1600s. That was until 1998. In that year, the first of 50 new driving coaches was delivered. Classified MDDM, the additional M at the front reveals why these driving trailers were so important. The M stands for motorized. For the first time, both DDM1s and DDARs could work as a multiple unit or a train without a dedicated locomotive. 
if the trains were daisy chained together, more horsepower was needed. For this, the MDDMs had three bogies, the third bogie in the middle of the vehicle, creating, in effect, a Bo-Bo-Bo locomotive with accommodation for 48 passengers. The motorised vehicle can always be easily recognised by not having a lower deck. In the mid-2000s, more sprinter units became available, releasing both DDM-1s and DDARs from their stopping train surface. The oldest units were a mere 20 years old at the time, so both types were pushed into regular intercity service. Innovative as these new sets were, they had a few issues. The DDARs had a habit of uncoupling themselves at speed. This, of course, is not even a good thing in the best of times, but if such a thing were to happen, both half of the trains would slow down due to the continuous braking system. The DDM1s were beginning to show their age, and they were all rapidly withdrawn in the early 2010s. That was until 2016 when the NS realised, hmm, maybe we should stop taking entire classes out of service at once, and service 44 carriages with the intention of being reinstated for regular use. But by 2019, the DDM1s were really really tired trains. The last official DDM1 surface taking place in December of that year. But for the DDARs, this was a totally different story. They were significantly newer, and the NS seemingly learned from their mistakes with withdrawing stock too early. As early as 2011, refurbishment work began on the DDAR sets to make them as up-to-date as possible in order to convert them into dedicated intercity multiple units. The refurbishment itself took place at NS's Harlem facility, reusing up to 65% of the old units. They were to exclusively work with the power of all 50 of the old MDDM motorized trailers, the briefly referred to earlier Virum double-deckers finally having an equal in the revised DDARs. In their refurbished form, the units were classified NID, or New Intercity Double-Decker, but enthusiasts called them DDZs because that was the name of the refurbishment program. There are 30 units with 4 carriages total, and 20 with 6 carriages total. The units have a larger seating compartment, Wi-Fi, a lounge on the lower deck, and one large front windshield instead of three smaller windows. I never quite understood that last one myself. The DDZ's performance was asked of them adequately, although the uncoupling issue didn't completely disappear with multiple incidents having taken place between their introduction and 2019. Another complaint which held the units back from performing to the best of their abilities was vibration. When trains got to high speeds, the drivers and guards noticed vibrations more severe than to what they would consider normal. In December 2020, the entire class was taken out of surface to rectify the issue. It appears that the braking system caused the wheels to wear into odd shapes, which causes poor ride quality at high speeds. It wasn't until December 2021 that the first DDZs were pressed back into regular service. One by one the units are being released back into the network, regularly running the Zwolle Rosendahl surface. Getting slightly editorial here, but I really like these trains. They have a very austere look to them with their straight sides and buffers, but I easily find them the most characterful trains on the NS network. I'd have these over the crammed ICMMs any day. It is absolutely terrifying to move from one carriage to the other because the gangway has no form of insulation, but these units truly have seating everywhere you look. And because of this rather dandy pole, even standing isn't an issue. This is very handy in a place like Hardewijk, where the tightest curve on the Dutch network often causes passengers to fall over. All the footage you've seen of a DDM in service are of the refurbished DDM2s and DDM3s, and they just look so gosh darn charming. The units are due for replacement in 2027, but if their story has taught us anything, it is that they will be around for some time after their expiration date. They're certainly resilient, the DD said. Hiya folks, I hope you found this a refreshing change from the usual episode of TGL. These trains always intrigued me, and I thought this channel was the perfect excuse for me to find out more about them. If this video comes off as a bit short, that is because this is the third version of this script. I didn't want to get too technical because A, I don't want to confuse people, and B, I'm not really good with the technical side of things. I liked filming this episode, I basically travelled up and down the country to get all the footage. Maybe I should cover more Dutch trains or locomotives, gives me an excuse to leave my loft every once in a while. Anyway, the next episode of TGL is definitely going to be the LNRP2s.
Probably. I promise. So with that in mind, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Cue the outro.